This video is a second video of a Linux series called Switching to Linux. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the myth related to hardware and software within Linux. So, enjoy. So let's start with the myth. The first one I want to debunk today is NVIDIA. If you have a NVIDIA GPU, there is a high chance you googled uh, Linux and NVIDIA and you're going to find a lot of like commentary negative toward Linux, telling you, hey, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you won't be able to use it. Or installing Linux with NVIDIA driver is a pain. Or like everything. Like I've, I've seen so many things. So first point is that you can install NVIDIA driver super easily. I will show you in this series of video that NVIDIA driver are not complicated at all. You just need to find the right distribution and have someone that's done all the debunking for you already, like me. I've been using my 1390 RTX, my 1080 Ti, and my 1490 RTX running on Linux on a daily basis for gaming and productivity. I had no issue at all. Are the drivers as good as on Windows? No. I want to be straight with you, like they are not as good. But are they really bad? They are not that bad either. There is just less option. There is a lot of things you won't be able to access right now. But the good news is like since I started using Linux, I have seen an incredible increase in terms of performance, but also in terms of usability of the driver. Everything is getting better. There is a lot of function you're going to be able to use like GLSS, like, like there is a lot of things you're going to still be able to use on Linux, but it's just as not as good as on Windows, but it's not bad. I'm going to make a quick list right now to give you an idea of what works and doesn't work. So first thing is like GLSS work. Second point is like you can have multiple screen on an Nvidia card with different resolution, different refresh rate. All this myth, it's long gone. They fixed it like a while ago. Another point is the fact that you have to compile your shader a specific way within Linux, etc. It's, it's all wrong. You still have to compile your shader, but you still have to do that in Windows anyways. So everything works pretty good nowadays. Don't let those old forum posts fool you. NVIDIA works. And sincerely, you need to understand that because I've seen so many forum points where people are praising AMG and the AMG GPU. Of course, installing Linux with the AMD GPU is easier because their drivers are actually open and you don't need uh, to install extra proprietary driver. But at the end of the day, if you like Nvidia and you use it for different reasons like CUDA, hello, CUDA is just a technology which is superior from a GPU standpoint toward like, you know, uh, the AMD one. Well, you need an Nvidia card. And guess what? Most of the server now they are using also NVIDIA card. So NVIDIA need to release driver which are like working properly. And I'm telling you again, they do work. So don't fall into this trap. It works. Another myth I want to talk about, which was true maybe years ago, was the installation of the sound card within Linux. I remember when I tried to install the, the desktop for the first time, and I'm talking about like the first Debian release. I, I believe it was in the late 1990s. I did install Debian and listen, man, it, 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 like making the sound card work was so hard. You needed to be really strong to understanding Linux and making it work. It, it was not easy at all. Nowadays, if you install a relatively new distribution, Installing a sound card is actually the easiest way you will have to do in Linux. And I will prove it to you in the, in the, in the next video when I install uh, the Linux distribution. This is just so, so, so easy. You have nothing to do. Everything comes up. And this is partially because of the new implementation, implementation called Pipewire and something else called Wire Plumber. I, I don't want to go too deep into that, but the idea is that Right now, I do believe like Linux is a really, really good platform for all the sound creative out there. If you are working into the sound business, music, 
uh, sound effect or whatever, everything relating to sound, I do believe that Linux in a, is in a really, really good spot. I know that Windows has a lot, lot, lot of issue with uh, some type of like lat latency problem. With Linux, it's literally finger in the nose. You have access to all those compatible layers which make music and you know sound card peripheral so so an instrument so so easy uh to use on linux this is just crazy so don't fall into those trap or those ideas that you know everything is gonna be everything is gonna be really bad because i have to install the sound card and it's gonna be a pain yes it was true maybe like five or ten years ago or 20 years ago but now it's, it's just like plug and play which is really awesome to give you an idea I have like this piece of hardware uh, plugged into a, a, a mixer which has 32 channels usable from a USB approach or uh, a hardware approach with all the different like jack input, XLR input everywhere there. It was easier to install that on Linux than on Windows. It, it's just awesome. Another point for all the gamers outside who believe in the power of the RGB light or LED or, you know, when this thing is just like flashing in your head and you're looking at your PC and you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> well, the good news is like open RGB is a really great piece of software because this software gives you the opportunity to manage all your RGB light through only one hub. And man, I've been using it on Linux. It has been a brief. I can control the LED on my mouse. I can control the LED in my PC. I can, I can control everything. I can even control my Elgato light with it. This is just a really, really good piece of software. It's open source, of course. And if you are really into RGB and you are scared about losing control of all your nice light inside your PC, just make sure that your hardware is compatible with this piece of software. I would say it should be. And again, if it's not, it's because your hardware manufacturer didn't do the job. It's not a Linux fault. So on my hand, when I went and I switched to Linux, I made sure that all the hardware I bought was actually compatible. The lead is pretty wild. There is a lot of compatible hardware, but there is still a slim chance that your specific hardware is not compatible and then you're going to be in a dead end. Just make sure that you, you do your homework. Now, the last myth I really want to debunk is, is Linux hard? And the answer is no, it's not hard. It's just you are not used to it. So now we are in a position where you're going to switch your world. You're going to move from Windows, which you have been like pretty good at, I guess, <laughs> I guess. And you're going to switch to the world of Linux. But does it mean it's going to be hard? No, you can make it really hard. If you don't watch the video at this end and don't put a like and subscribe to my channel, I will be hard for you. Uh, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> but what I can tell you is that if you take the time and follow my instruction and you have someone like me, then there is ton on the internet who are trying to help beginner to go through, you know, the hassle of switching to Linux, it will make your life pretty easy. And when I say pretty easy, I would say like really, really, really easy. So now the question at $100 million, baby. What distro are you supposed to, to go to? And dude, you have a choice. Apparently, there is more than 500 distro right now available to download for you. How, how do you choose? Where do you go? How, where do you start from? So let me tell you, there is really not a lot of distribution we are going to fulfill your need as a beginner. There is, as this wonderful website is actually like... Uh, showing you le less than 10. I would say overall, there is less than three, which are really, in my opinion, easy to learn. And, or I would say like easy to switch from Windows to Linux. Now I did debunk some of the most common myth about Linux. I would like to know if you guys uh, think I forget some of them. I want to also make a little introduction for the next video of this series which is going to be about how to choose the right distro as a beginner. Again, don't forget to subscribe, like. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.